history kid. I'm a young patriot who loves history. Today my dad and I are on a bike tour of the 1964 New York World's Fairgrounds in Flushing Meadow, Queens, New York. My dad still remembers where everything was. The 1964 to 1965 New York World's Fair was the third major fair to be held in New York City. The theme of the fair was Peace Through Understanding, dedicated to man's achievement on shrinking globe in an expanding universe. Let's see what's still here. The 1939 to 1940 World's Fair was held here also. Industrial exhibitors played a major role by hosting huge, elaborate exhibits. Many of them returned to the 1964 to 1965 fair with even more elaborate versions of the shows they had presented 25 years earlier. The theme of the fair was symbolized by this 12-story high stainless steel model of the earth called the Unisphere. In 1964, it only cost $2 for adult admission and everyone dressed nicely. My dad had pictures of men even wearing ties at the fair. The view nobody got back in 1964. don't know it but there are maps of the 1964 and the 1939 World's Fairs etched in stone. The 1964 to 1965 World's Fair featured 140 pavilions on 646 acres. Now for my New Jersey connection. This is easy. First of all, my dad and his mom and dad came here 18 times over the two years this fair was open. This is the time capsule that contains my dad's signature he signed when he was nine years old. There's even a Beatles record, electric toothbrush, and credit cards in the capsule. They're supposed to open it in 5,000 years, so they still have another 4,952 years to go to the year 6939. New York State played host to the fair at its $6 million pavilion called the Tent of Tomorrow. The main floor of the pavilion was a large-scale design of a Texaco highway map of New York State. Here is what is left of the New York State pavilion. As you see, the roadside map is gone. In the 1997 film, Men in Black, the observation towers are revealed to contain the ships used by the first extraterrestrials to visit Earth.
I was here with you in 1964. State Pavilion. Now across this bridge is the transportation section of the fair. We are right here right now. The General Motors attraction was right here behind me. And this huge building was the Futurama ride, which was a show which visitors were seated in moving chairs and glided past elaborately detailed miniature 3D model scenery showing what life might be in the future. Futurama ride proved to be the fair's most popular exhibit. Nearly 26 million people took the journey into the future during the fair's two-year run. My dad's disappointed. He thought we would be there by now. My dad remembers these rockets from the 1964 World's Fair. This is where the Ford exhibit was, right next to the General Motors in the transportation section. Ford introduced the Ford Mustang automobile to the public at this pavilion on April 17, 1964. My dad tells me how every time we would come to the fair that he and his cousins would want to ride in the Mustang but only got to once. He remembers the cars were all convertibles and each radio station was a different language narrating the ride. It was right over there. We are now standing where the Ford Motor Company was. This is a souvenir my dad got from it. This is where the fun part of the World's Fair was. This is where the marina was. There was a log flume, a dolphin show, a monorail over in this part. The Walt Disney Company designed and created four shows at the fair. It's a small world boat ride, General Electric's Carousel Progress, Ford Motor Company's Ford Magic Skyway, and the Illinois Pavilion's Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. You can still ride and see some of these attractions today. Yes, they're still making us smile. At Disney World, you can still ride the Carousel of Progress. In Disneyland, you can still experience It's a Small World, see the dinosaurs still fighting from the Ford exhibit on Disneyland train, and see Mr. Lincoln still kicking on Main Street. You just gotta know where to look. Like the 1939 fair, the 1964 to 1965 New York World's Fair lost money, but the memories they left behind are priceless. Till next time, I'm Nick the History Kid, reminding you to come to New Jersey and see all of our historical sites. Remember my state slogan, New Jersey, from the Revolutionary War to the Jersey Shore, 
both his street in front away to you.